Hi everyone. I'm going to wait you to connect. I hope you are dealing. I'm uh, not really dealing because I'm now on uh, my Instagram, on my YouTube channel, and I'm trying to activate the live on my phone. And of course, I don't know what to, how to do it on the phone because on my computer it was super easy. And I don't know how to go on my phone. So I'm gonna just write to my uh, fan page that everybody joined uh, the YouTube. So this way I don't need to focus on the free devices. Hello everybody, I'm right there with you. I just wait you to connect. Give you some few minutes. Alrighty, I will... One second. Are you there? Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm right there with you. I'm just letting you a little bit of chance to connect. I was super on time today. So I guess you were not expecting that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, give you a few more minutes and uh, put this, okay. Uh, put this thing on, on on my Facebook that I will be only on YouTube. And then we're going to start. Get, grab yourself something to drink. Be ready. It will be long talk, probably, as most of you uh, who knows me. Uh, some of you who knows me, uh, you know that uh, psychology is totally my thing and I really love it. And, and I think it's, it's super important to take care about this part of your flying and of your life. Um, mm -hmm. right, right there. So I'm letting you a few more minutes. And I'm right there with you. Okay, so as I set water, very important. Tea is there. So, hello, hello, how are you doing? I hope you're not suffering too much on lockdown. I hope uh, that my, oh, I can, perfect. I see that I can hear myself on YouTube. So, today's topic, as I said, is uh, connected with mental strength, psychology, and I, just found my old notes from my from my lecture on it uh, during newcomer challenge uh, uh, run by DHV like uh, three years ago, and I've called this lecture uh, "Champions Mind." So, first of all, as you know, the rest, the race or the flight, or your life is uh, won or lost in your head. So you can lose it or win it before it even starts. And when everything goes good, everything goes right, this is super easy to stay calm and to be present and uh, to do your job the best as you can, while when when things go wrong, this is when the, the mental strength is uh, ultra important. 
And I would like to speak with you first of all about like things which I think is important to to have in mind when we speak about this champion's mind setup. And I like to start with the personal like traits, which are very important in my opinion. And first of all, you have to be, you have to have capacity to learn. Like you have to be ready to learn. Then you have to be able to adapt and it's not only like training adaptation changes adaptation and as well when we already fly you need to be able to to change the plan according to conditions so this skill of adaptation is very important and for sure you have to be ready to work hard toward your goals and invest time into fulfilling your goals um then you should be consequent. So follow your plans for your, your training plan or follow your uh, vision, follow your, um, follow your life, just uh, stick to it, you know. And then self-awareness is very important, in my opinion. Self-discipline, this is the same, like, connected with consequence, uh, self-confidence, which might be misunderstood and uh, some guys or some girls go more direction of arrogancy. But for me, uh, self-confidence uh, is nothing uh, like arrogancy. Uh, it's like self-confidence, it's being aware, for me, it's being aware who I am, what is my, what are my abilities, where um, I stand, being uh, able to objectively analyze myself and um, and do self reflection, objective, uh, competitive, but competitive in not in like bad meaning. I want to destroy everybody, you know, not this kind of competitiveness. For me, I really like the uh, Kelly Slater definition of competitiveness, and it's um, just willing to be better every day and not settle down without what you have, just constantly improving. As somebody said, uh, if you stop improving, you're basically going backwards because if the entire world is going forward, so if you stop, then you basically are going backwards. The next very important thing is uh, control of emotion. And um, very important thing in control of emotion is understanding what are emotions and why we have them. I see too many people acting out of emotions. And I think we're lacking of understanding that emotions is just in other way, our body is communicating with us uh, its observation, and this is just information. We just use our body extra information, and based on that, we should take decisions. But uh, emotions sometimes are very basic. It's like uh, it's our reptile uh, brain uh, <laughs> active there, and it's reacting upon our past and the past. Um, like especially fear on our past uh, experiences. And we have totally power of body, but I know like I'm in control here. Uh, so these are the most important character traits, which I think uh, if you wanna be successful, especially in sport, but as well in private life, you should have. Then, we have the entire structure, like uh, entire factors, how we build up the, the, um, our career. So for me, one of the most important is, first of all, motivation. Uh, but, you know, we have motivation which is coming from outside and from inside. 
And the outside motivation can be um, somebody from our friends is like my girlfriend, my boyfriend. So I'm going into it to please them, to have something in common. Um, or my like in other disciplines or some, some people in flying as well, like parents pushing them to do stuff and expecting them to do certain uh, on certain level, like performing on cer certain level. And that is pushing, like putting a lot of pressure, which is which is um, uh, disturbing our performance, in my opinion. The other motivation internal is like, um, you know, orientated on the result, like negative motivation, I would say, is just focus on results and results and, and this drive. I would prefer to use the the word like passion because if you are really passionate about what you're doing um almost nothing can hurt you like if you didn't perform well well but i'm still doing that what i love and um, if you are passionate then you don't mind to to do other stuff which is necessary to perform good in flying so like physical preparation and and when my friends going to have a party, I go sleep early because I want to go up and, and fly in the morning or like this kind of choices are becoming super simple because it's so much easier to pick up our priorities. Uh, so that said, the question is, what is your uh, motivation profile and maybe uh, you should check on that. Then to plan and to set your goals, for sure you want to have them the constructive way. So for sure, result goal is like, that maybe you can put it on the top, but this is not a goal which you are in control of because you are not in control of how other people will, will perform uh, in this competition, in this season. So the better way is to break it down into uh, how I, I want to achieve it and what are the steps, what are the things I need to learn, what are the skills I need to learn uh, to be closer to my, to my what goal. Uh, and this is all I can actually do, you know, I can be best prepared as possible and then what happened that happened, you know, motivation <laughs> factor. And when we are setting the goals, of course, we are thinking about the long term, middle term and short term. So when we have a long term goal like this season is really hard to say what is my uh, what is my middle term or long term goal. But um, let's prepare for next season. So I know I should improve certain things and then I train for them and then I'm asking myself what I can do today what I can literally do today to be closer to my goal and even if you're on lockdown you can do so much so much like uh, read a book on meteorology stare out the window and observe how the clouds are uh, in, like changing and try to visualize uh, where the thermal is hitting them. Observe a bird thermally the term, like the climb and, and, and look how they are doing it. Go on the treadmill or on the bike or if you do some uh, core work uh, to be uh, strong uh, for next season or like next flying, you know. Uh, like long, long, for me, long, long hours flying requires a physical preparation and as a spartan said in strong body strong mind so if you have a weak body uh your your mind will give up on you at some point and uh, that said for sure like the last week uh, lecture i was holding it was on the um on nutrition and i was really sad to see that there were not so many people attending because uh, for me that what you eat is so important. It's basically if your if your body and brain is uh, 
full of toxin, it's uh, acid, then your neurotransmitters are not working properly, you are not sharp enough in your head, you're clumpy, you're tired all the time, you're easy to, like, very prompt to fatigue. So that what you're eating is playing a significant role in um, any performance, everyday performance and, and competition and cross-country performance. So definitely, I, I don't say you have to become a vegetarian like or vegan or whatever, but definitely you should uh, have a look to not have like question yourself if you really want to have the junk food in your diet and uh, alcohol and how much, you know, and what about like cleansings and if I want to do it or not. And definitely uh, ask yourself the question that like, good idea is maybe to do basic, um, what was the name? body type test and you know what your your body type and what you should actually eat and what is good for you and hydrate you know we are almost everybody of us is dehydrated these days and we should actually drink one glass of water every hour how many of you drink one glass of water every hour so how you want your brain to work properly if you don't even i don't i'm forgetting to drink i'm the worst drinker ever i need to set up a alarm i'm like you know this is this is the skill that i still need to learn but i don't want to preach too much on that there is like i'm a not a nutrition specialist and and definitely there are so many great uh, sites on it. But uh, what I would like to encourage you, always double check and research on whatever you find. And because jumping on, uh, if, you, if, you, if you jump on some like super hardcore unbalanced diet, then might, you might just hurt, harm yourself more than do good. Okay, coming back to psychological things. Um, very important thing is like with the nutrition is to be like, I believe in balance and the same with your uh, mental life. If your life is a mess, if you have a tr tr problems, uh, some of us are using, like I was just doing this for years, escaping to sport, to from the everyday troubles, but this is not a, a really a good place to be because at some point it's gonna drain you. So the best thing is to manage to balance uh, your life and try to have, you know, like a good base on private life, then it's so much easier to create a good space for your professional life and your sport life when you have uh, a passion, when you have a friends around you who support you, a positive people, uh, but not like chili leaders who are just like, oh, you're amazing, whatever you do, but like challenge you, uh, but, but give you like constructive support and you know you can count of them, on them. And for sure, like having, uh, just check out like Kriegel's, like there is like this uh, article in Cross Country magazine when uh, Kriegel is discussing this uh, crisis of um, of life. Okay, I'm just saying that my YouTube crashed. I'm gonna wait for a minute for my YouTube to reconnect. Um, okay, I'm back. Great. Yes. YouTube is back. So uh, it's uh, called, um, you know, it's looking like a spider web. And if you look in the, in the back, in the, in the cross country mats, but uh, many, many other, um, yeah, I see that. Thanks a lot. 
Uh, yeah, you will find it in many self-analyzed uh, books, and it's really worth to look at that. And it's definitely going to uh, help you to be more happy, more relaxed. And you know what's happening when you are relaxed and more happy in your life? You are more, per, like your perception is going so much wider. Your intuition is much sharper. And a lot of things which you do in, uh, in flying is intuition won by training. So you, you really want to be in tune in that in your life. How as well we can practice uh, the state of mind uh, of, of being balanced and happy and, and present, which is very important, is for sure practicing uh, mindfulness and meditation. And it helps a ton on de-stressing. There are so many different directions in meditation. Just, I advise you to, to try on it and, and find your way because there is not only this, I'm sitting and thinking about nothing, I'm an empty brain and I should not have any thoughts. Like if you're just wanting to, to test on that, there is like on um, uh, Headspace, there's this 10 days for free you can check and you can understand the basics. And there is so many other apps like Calm or just, you know, try on it and scroll through the internet and find the one which is, which is working for you. And why it is, in, like, for me, important to be here and now? Because when we are flying and you are in the moment, then your perception is like you feel the thermal better, you feel when it's finishing, you are more like knowing when to leave the thermal, you are more like understanding what's going on around you, you, you don't oversee the guy next to you and you will not crash into him. And this is um, what I was doing on the Europeans in 2016. Every time when my brain started to hijack me and like started to think about the outcome and about uh, the goal and about the results, I was just like, here and now, here and now, here and now, you know, just like, or sing, you know, I was just singing. And this is basically a, a very, uh, I'm not very good singer, so don't listen to me <laughs> when I sing in the air. But this is one of the great uh, methods uh, to work with fear, and it's good method when your brain is uh, going crazy on you. And for sure, the most important thing is just enjoy. Like that was the best probably piece of advice I ever heard, uh, and it was from Jean. And he said, just enjoy, you know, don't be pissed off all the time. Don't be like, Arr, Arr, you know, just enjoy. And if something goes wrong, then you should have your, like, your um, plan be in your head and just take it as opportunity to do something else, something, and trust in yourself that you can catch up because, you know, I, I believe most of guys or, or, or girls who are going for competition, they know how to fly cross country themselves. So, you know, when they fly away and you make a mistake and you lose them, you just, you know, focus and full power and keep on going and never give up. You know, this is when you watch my old YouTube videos, I was so many times like just, you know, fighting till the end and you can hear what I'm saying to myself and just sometimes it's no matter how long just be in goal and take it as it comes like same time in European Championship 2016 uh, we needed to change the takeoff and we are on the ground and the queue was 45 minutes and hot and dying from overheating in full equipment with all the harness on our shoulders people 
start going crazy and I was just like yeah this is how it is and you know we are queuing and if we're gonna shout it's not gonna change anything a part of burning your uh you know burning your energy on on useless thoughts like this and just you know focus on where everybody's climbing so you can be in five seconds on the cloud and just go on the task and we took off with this mood with Nuno with Chilio and basically I, I did very well in that day I don't know if it wasn't the day I won overall and Nuno was really good but at least I know for sure I was like really really top on that day because basically we were just you know full on like super focused and here we are coming to the point where important thing is talk about failure and feeling about failure and feeling about uh, what is the failure. And for me, failure is um, not performing according to your expectations. And this is for me, but failure is sometimes you know, like you expect to take higher place and you don't and you do feel like you fail and you are over graving and some people need two months to grave, some people need half a year to grave. And for me, this is uh, not the way to go because uh, if we fail, that's mean we miss something on our preparation or we miss a little bit of luck. Like there's a little bit of luck. We can't do anything about this. Our sport is a little bit of luck, like uh, something that is totally out of our control. But many failures I've got in my life, or many misresults from my expectations, were due to overseeing something in my preparation, overseeing, like not being focused enough, not being present enough, not being hydrated enough. So, Every time you feel like something didn't go well, and even if something went well, you should uh, learn out of it, and especially when something went well. And, and try to, to journal, the journal like every day. This is like very, very good advice you will find in Dennis, Dennis Pagan book, uh, Performance Flying. Like if you journal every day and you point out what went good today and what went bad today, and then you will think how to make these good things constant and to how to improve those bad things, then trust me, your performance will just go like this up because you will not make the same mistakes over and over again. You know, so another uh, super, uh, super scam on failure. I'm always um, saying to my students in skiing, there is no learning without falling. And if you don't fall, you will not learn to stand up. So this is very important part of, uh, of a learning process. and. If you never take risk on banging with your head on on edge of your capacity, but uh, staying safe in paragliding, still like knowing where you are, but still like you know a little banging, you will not really know where you are, and you will always think that th this is this is my limit, when actually your limit is already here. So this is that was this is what I always believed and always preached to my students. And then I found this amazing TED talk. Uh, don't ask me what is the name of the guy, but uh, he's basically talking about I love failure. And oh, damn, I forgot the name of the talk. Uh, just like this is a guy who is rolling like an Olympian uh, Olympic roller and like huge guy and he is really full of humor 
and he's talking about capacity bubble and i really advise you go find this ted talk just put i don't know i love failure or whatever you will find it that's a big canadian guy <laughs> so that said the most important like the on the end this is a uh, like this is athlete <laughs> And this is what we can do. <laughs> I will just like speed through this because I don't want to make it bored. You can like, if you feel like you want to ask me some questions, please pop, pop the questions in uh, and I will go back to it uh, and answer them. Don't worry, I'm following what's happening in both screens. So if you have any questions, I'm ready to go. For those who are just tuning in, the, today we are speaking about mental training and um, the champion's mindset. Okay, so what I can do, like the question I, was, I asked myself is how to explain you what I can do before, during and after an event or um, a cross-country flight. So many of those things we already speak about, so I would just run through it. So what I can do before is plan, uh, think about strategies. So especially in competition and cross country is very important. Keep, a, keep eye on your timing. Think about your strategies, what you will do if condition change, you know, be ready to, to change, change your strategies, work on your procedures. So like, my favorite uh, two procedures to train is uh, reset. It's when my glider really, like if I lose, lose it and my glider goes far off, I reset. And I need to know it like by with close eye how to reset my glider. That's why I always encourage you to go and do SIVs and know because this is your emergency training. It's your like, like you know, body body drivers are going to to drive in on simulators. Airplane pilots are driving on simulators, and you know, SIV simulating uh, all the shit can happen there. Sorry for the French word, and 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 be more ready. I don't say you're gonna be like super safe just because you did SIV, but. This is like your mind training and, and this is your safety training. And if you repeat it many times enough, then you will become more comfortable and you, you will know the limits of your glider. So this is, uh, you're gonna win a lot of self-confidence, not arrogance, please. So else what you can do is, um, of course, train physically and, and mentally and nutrition uh, and train your visualization. So coming back to SIVs, I visualize a lot uh, full cells, collapses, but as well thermaling and feeling in thermal. Uh, even if we don't fly now, you can just close your eyes and go fly in your favorite place. And you can like, what is amazing, uh, I don't know if Johannes Baumgartner uh, wrote anything about his uh, record flight from, uh, help, you know, in Italy, this record place, but he basically memorized explanation about the place written by another uh, Austrian guy uh, from his long flight. And Johannes just went on this blog, memorized the blog step by step, like thermal by thermal, transition by transition, altitude by altitude. He knew it by heart. And it was like, he went there first time, he took off, he flew, he broke the European record, on like German record on triangle. So this is like the masterpiece of visualization and mental training you can do. And even if you don't fly now, you can do it. You can go to your dreamed place in your head, to your dreamed place where you want to break the record, your personal record, and fly there. 
again and again and visualize these thermals, these transitions, this how it's gonna feel, you know. This is a very um, good thing to do now, especially. Uh, fear management, you can um, make like work on your strategies uh, of uh, fear management, analyze, prepare, um, prepare your gear, prepare, like, you know, be sure that everything is in trim because this is giving a lot of confidence if you know your gliders in trim and your rescue is packed well and it's going to work. You know, this gives a lot of like calmness and, and confidence. Um, practice your refocusing. Uh, if something went wrong or like you get disrupted by something, like interrupted in your thought, um, how, to, how to focus again. Practice your focus. There are a lot of uh, exercises on focus practicing. You can even buy books on that. I don't have any example here, but I know they're existing and just Google like how to improve my focus. Um, work on your support group for sure. And surround yourself with like-minded people who are gonna support you in achieving your goals. Okay, and so during, for sure, use all of that what you've learned before. Stay focused and think about relaxation because if you focus too much, then you burn too much uh, sugar. So think about strategies as well, like before, think about some strategies, how I'm gonna relax and then refocus. What I'm doing is like, for me, drinking is my moment of relaxation. I'm, like on transitions, I, I do sometimes photos, um, I eat, mm, I enjoy the landscape, that's why uh, probably I'm flying better in places which are just beautiful because you're just, you know, admiring the landscapes. And then focus again when it's needed. And then, uh, you know, every time something don't go, like you want it, just refocus and think about the best you can do out of the situation. Don't beat yourself. Just, you know, think about how to make it a positive outcome. And uh, we've called this uh, on our uh, training with the national team, uh, with Dorota from uh, uh, Flow. Foundation, uh, the five second fish. You, I don't know if you remember Dory from uh, Finding Nemo. It's like, uh, this is like, that's why I play tennis a lot. Uh, and it gives me uh, a new input on my mental training is because my coach is just cruel -less about telling me, uh, forget that ball, new ball. <laughs> you know, I'm like, mentalizing about what I did wrong with the previous ball and everything and he's just like hitting on me more balls more balls more balls till the moment I cannot I cannot uh, play it anymore and this is just to make me think focus on the next ball forget the past you will think later you know just focus on on on, on the task uh, in front of you and this is what basically you have to do like uh, one thing at a time and think about the task ahead because if you mentalize about that what happened and beat yourself you might miss opportunity or you make or you can put yourself into very dangerous situation don't forget to eat and hydrate during the flights yeah, and then the most important thing when you uh, finish, celebrate. Doesn't matter if you reach your goal or like if you if you reach your uh, objective or not. Celebrate. You've tried. You've learned something something new, and you can do better next time because of this experiences what you did. So when you land, first thing first is celebrate and then after journal reflect 
and think about what went good, what went bad, and how to improve. And after all of that, give yourself a little bit of rest, you know, like uh, give your body a little bit of love, good food, hydration, relaxation, do some stuff, some fun stuff with your friends, which is not connected with flying and repeat. Another very good thing, uh, what you can think about, what I was speaking uh, in, the, uh, oh, in the podcast we did um, a few weeks ago, is that you can think about how to periodize your training. So in like, it's very good for your brain as well because you don't get bored. Uh, you give time to your brain uh, to actually adapt to the training you you do. And I always say that for me, uh, my ski season is my uh, very important period because this is the time when my brain is just uh, putting everything into correct shelves. Because if you just train, 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 you put so much information into your head that it's not keeping up, you know. So. And you need some time to, you know, organize the knowledge and make these neural connections needed. I don't see any questions. It would be cool to have some questions from you because I'm done actually about the basics and we soon need to finish if I want to put this live on my Instagram. Oh, you see my uh, mountain of equipment there, but I don't care. And my books. <laughs> so I've brought you today as well some books which I have here with me, as you probably, like those of you who follow me, you know that I stuck in my apartment uh, in Austria where I work and I choose it for a reason because I didn't want to be stuck in the city and not being able to go out. Here we are free to go out and do some sport like since monday we are able to uh do some sport outdoors so my uh reading advices a uh, big big advices are from terry orlik and the, another one is in pursuit of excellence so this one is embracing your potential and this is about how to uh how to balance exactly about what I was saying. I was always following this idea, but uh, this one especially, you know, it's like how to balance your life and through this perform uh, better. And uh, In Pursuit of Excellence is a great work on sports psychology and you will find just everything there for me. This is like a Bible and I go back there all the time. This is a book which I didn't read yet but my friend Joanna advised me to read it. And there is another book, Champions Come Back, which I just ordered and I'm super excited for this book. Like this is on my reading list and I didn't jump on it yet. Uh, if you are into basic knowledge and importance about sports psychology, the mind gym, this is how to train your mind as you train your muscles in the sport. For those of you who are thinking how to deal with fear, this is like a very nice book. Uh, I'm reading it right now, as you see. And they're like a case study on many athletes, which you would consider as crazy, but they are explaining why they, like this book explains why they are not crazy. And this is another, uh, like I'm very embarrassed to say, but because I got this book so long time ago, but those for of you who, don't uh, read so or like don't understand so much so good um, English and they're Russian speaking. There is a Russian book. I got it as a gift. I'm super excited to read it as well. I will uh, work my Kyrillic again because I don't read much in Russian. I do speak Russian, but I don't read much in Russian. And as always, I'm going to post like the full list uh, of the books um, tomorrow evening after Polish uh, Polish version of this uh, live talk. So, 
but like feel free to grab anything out there. And my another uh, advice is for sure it is good to get yourself a, a mental coach because when you're a beginner in this mental trip, it's sometimes hard to understand the, the psychological uh, narrative and the psychological language. Bonjour, jean <laughs> And uh, he will help you to set correct goals and will pick this, uh, this maybe thinking mistakes you have and will address the issues you have personally. And uh, I know many guys who improved a lot in flying since they have a mental coach, uh, like a very good example uh, is uh, Kriegel uh, with Thomas, and I know that uh, Luca Bernardin and um, Honorant Amar, they did work with, with, uh, with a mental coach and the performance improved a ton after that. So you see the top pilots are doing it. So why would you not do that? And another thing is do case studies. Like if you have some uh, some pilots who you really like, um, they they inspire you. Uh, look what they do. Like, or observe them, assemble them, and uh, try to figure out what are the mental hacks, ha what they are doing. And another thing is, I I I love watching YouTube. Mm, interviews uh, with top athletes like I love Kelly Slater and the way he thinks and the way he communicates like now not I don't speak about Kelly Slater in times of uh, sex drugs and rock and roll but this uh, mature Kelly Slater who is really self-reflective and um, many others just read on them and, and, and watch on YouTube I have here a question how do you mentally focus during flying after getting collapses or big turbulence? That's a very good question. I'm a chicken shit. <laughs> so this is a very important question because if you get a collapse, it's a definitely surprise and it's gonna give you adrenaline rush. And adrenaline rush, like how I feel it is just going through my body and it's just like the wave of heat and then my hands are shaking, my feet are shaking and sh shake it out first of all let it shake i don't care if my glider is shaking with me or not let it shake because if you don't let your muscles shake you're gonna lock the stress in your muscles and it's gonna like more and more and more stress collected like this is making your body more tense and you will get some other troubles with the time and refocus uh, is basically okay breathe like usually when we are in stressful situations, we forget about breathing. So we don't give the most important fuel to our body, which is oxygen. Focus on breathing, not hyperventilate, of course, but just uh, calm down your breathing. One of the technique is breathe in on one, breathe out on two, breathe in on two, breathe out on four, breathe in on three, breathe out on six, and then you're gonna calm down. Or, um, Another thing is uh, just, you know, and then focus on next, on next job. What is next? What is the most important thing I need to do? Like for sure, you cannot do it when you're still in city, shitty place because when you get a collapse and you're close to rocks, first of all, get yourself out of the shitty place. Sorry for my French. And then uh, focus on, on refocusing. But when you're in safe place, then you can do all of that things. And then focus on next thermal and focus on a, a cloud, a bird, sing, you know, and, and you will see this emotions will go down. Big turbulence is the same. It's, it's a question of your training. And uh, your brain, like, I don't know how big turbulence is big for you and definitely you shouldn't put yourself to uh, conditions which are too much for your skills. But uh, I, I have this, like there is a brain study and I, I wrote like 
Uh, look at my, my interview. Oh, you don't have it. It's in Polish, but I hope we're going to have it uh, soon online, uh, like somewhere available in English. He said that your brand is adapting with the time. So uh, something what you perceive as a turbulent, if it's objectively not so turbulent because other gliders are not collapsing and falling down from the sky, but you feel this is like super turbulent, that's mean it's you being too much sensi too sensitive for the condition. But your body don't want you to be in distress for too long time. So after a few minutes, after like half an hour, one hour of a little suffer, your brain will just shut down some of your feelings and you will be, feel totally calm in this condition. Like for me, when I go to India to beer, I need two days of one hour flights and then I'm just cooked. Like don't push over your overcooking, over anxiety uh, level. What I do if the, I need to get used to turbulent condition, like spraying and dosing it um, slowly. So I'm going there, I fly a little bit and then I go to land, I take my time, I go fly again, I go to land and uh, with some time you just don't feel it the same way anymore and I was just after two days in beer I'm always pushing like normal and I don't feel it and that's a great technique yeah the same I experienced in Valle so if you have any more questions because we have like I would give you like five minutes more and then I will need to to stop, otherwise our life will not happen. So for those who are turning on, we are speaking about sports psychology and elements which are important. If you missed, uh, if you missed uh, the the entire uh, live, it's going to be available on YouTube and on my Instagram live. Instagram live for 24 hours after I finish on YouTube on my channel, which is youtube.com slash photo Claudia. So yeah, Andre, hi back. <laughs> Hola. Okay, I have a question here. Uh, do you feel a lot of difference flying in snowy regions and very hot ones? like in northern Brazil. I don't know northeast of Brazil or like Brasilia. I have never flown there, but I'm def I was definitely flying in some very hot, dry regions like Turkey, high, high plains. And for sure, the, the thermals are so different. Like uh, you have one condition. Hold on, I'm going to turn on the light. <laughs> you have... It's totally different uh, conditions uh, in uh, in the Alps in spring. It's it's uh, stronger, tighter, maybe uh, like rougher. And if you have uh, a hot place, sometimes you have super strong thermals, but they are just wide and big. And sometimes can be sharp edged and like super surprising. So. Yeah, this is this is like just you know flying like for me to excel in your flying is to fly as many different conditions and as possible and just uh, learning to handle them and learning to use them. I hope I've answered your question, Rodrigo. So, do we have any more questions? Gonna sc scroll down. If I didn't miss something on my Instagram, but I don't think so. By the way, for those of you who are uh, celebrating Easter today, happy Easter to all of you. I hope you have some family around you. For those of you who don't have a family around you because you are is on isolation somewhere else, then. Then your family, I, I really hope that uh, this new technology we have at hand, like Zoom and 
and uh, you know Skype and everything is it's helping to get together and somehow survive this uh, traditionally family orientated holidays and uh, as you see I'm alone but I'm okay with that uh, I like to be alone so I'm not suffering anyway so I don't see oh there is a question I have some issues okay Elena is asking, I have some issues with what other people think about my skill or how I do certain things in paragliding also. I want to start to compete and I also have the fear of failing. Do you have some tips? Definitely. Get yourself immunity. Like... Don't care what the people think about your flying and your skills as long as you're safe. You should like filter those people who wish you good and filter those people who wish you like wish you don't fly because you're a woman. Because you will find I'm sorry guys for I hope you're very supportive, but uh and many guys out there are just doing a lot of critics because or many not many some guys out there are doing a lot of critics against women because they think women basically should not fly some guys are doing a lot of comments from other protective ideas so the best way to get immune is just always think the positive like if somebody is giving a critic to you think what i can get out of this like is he is right or wrong is it true or not is it him projecting or um on me his feelings his failures his uh, attitude or is it really a valid point is it if it's a valid point then just take it and go train if it's him projecting then let him project say thank you and go do your stuff you know the most important thing is that you stay safe and that you find the mentor is going to bring you there where you want to be don't expect people to just um like you know go and like oh you know you're so amazing because you're a girl and you try to fly. No, nobody going to do this. Like the, the main important thing is toughen up. When you're going into this, uh, into this kind of sport, just toughen up and do your homeworks. And don't like, then you will become self-aware so much that you will not uh, like get affected by the critic. And fear of failure uh, yeah, this is what I was uh, saying before. Uh, go and grab this YouTube um, interview about about failure. I'm going to try to get it out for you on my other phone. Uh, meantime, uh, my phone is super slowly. It's updating, so I can't. Just type um, I seek failure. Maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it, because I have to finish in uh, one and a half minutes, I'm going to put it downstairs. And the other thing is think always that every failure is learning opportunity and it's not something where the world is, should end. So uh, one more question from Andre. Uh, do you think we are going to fly again this year? I was planning Chimona, now maybe Argentina. Do you know what PVC will work? No. I can't tell you because we are waiting. Like, this is internal World Cup question. I don't know because we are waiting for Chimona decision. It doesn't look good. I mean, like, if you uh, see... So, those of you who are on Instagram, uh, bye. See you. Sorry, I needed to drop those guys on Instagram uh, because, uh, because we were running out of time. I will continue here on YouTube a little bit more. I was saying to Andre, 
that if you follow a little bit uh, news from Italy, it doesn't look that the situation gonna get stable in um, any uh, soon. They're just hitting the plateau and it's already a month. So I guess the plateau will last for a while and the provisions is that they gonna go into new normality in maybe five, six months. So I, I'm very pessimistic when it's about Gemona, but um, we don't have official decision. So this is my private uh, idea. We don't have an official statement on Gemona yet. Um, uh, and uh, we are still waiting for a local organizer to put official statement like did France, which is canceled. And um, we we see what's gonna happen. This is super hard to say if 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 we're gonna like if we're gonna compete this year and if we're gonna fly at all this year. I mean. This is so, so our uncertain time. The best we can do is just um, like prices in our heads for now. And as I said uh, in my another video, please, please, please don't watch any accident videos, any accident movies, any like 500 best crashes of the season because this is one of what your brain gonna learn, you're gonna learn to be scared, watch positive stuff, I don't know, um, summits, uh, like, I don't know what's the movie, but with Horacio Lawrence and uh, Pete Petar and Vessel flying in Himalaya, or Antoine Girard flying in Himalaya, or like some positive things, like visualize your flying, you know, stick to those things. Um, Oh, yeah, Emila, I know. <laughs> Happy Easter to you, Emila, and hope to see you tomorrow, too, on the Polish one. Uh, thank you for all the reminders. Yeah, you're very welcome, Shoanna. Okay, so your last chance for put the questions on the uh, YouTube channel, and I'm going to finish that one, too. Okay, so uh, once again, happy Easter and uh, stay tuned for our uh, next uh, live tutorial. I think I'm gonna speak a little bit more about physical preparation for flying. That will be super short because we are not, um, we are not uh, endurance athletes, but still a little bit. Uh, Unfortunately, I didn't do much about the nutrition this time. If you would like that I repeat it and pause here about uh, nutrition, then please let me know in comments below. Then I'm gonna remake a YouTube talk about, uh, this is my talk of last week about the nutrition and my way uh, to uh, healthy eating. But as I said before, there is uh, a lot of, uh, amazing uh, YouTube channels, like I'm super uh, into ritual right now and I'm just uh, obsessively listening to all his podcasts and um, and there is so much more, like, uh, like if you see my uh, posts in uh, Instagram about about my eating books, you will see a lot of good stuff where you can get inspired. Yeah, Andre, thank you very much and hope to see you too soon. I miss you, I miss Brazil so much. Yeah, I hope you're doing all good. Okay, so. Thank you for joining and see you next time. Bye.